Welcome to the Kingdom. I'm Chris, and this is Good Enough Gaming. Howdy folks, and welcome to this follow-up video. On the previous video, I did about piles of shame and files of shame. Now that video has only been up for a few weeks, but it got a really good reception. And there were a lot of comments, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Since Wargaming is a community hobby, I was wondering what kinds of comments, reactions, and advice might appear in the comments section. Especially comments on how people handle or work through their piles and files of shame. And y'all didn't disappoint. So in this video, I thought we'd go through some of the suggestions and ideas that you, the viewers, came up with as ways that you approach, work through, or just plain deal with those piles of minis and terabytes of STLs. Apologies in advance if I misrepresent your suggestion. And remember, these are community ideas. They're not all mine. So if you disagree, that's fine. But don't shoot the messenger. Number one, kit bashing. Go wild with kit bashing. You've seen those kit bash models that Games Workshop used to always showcase on the community where a hobbyist used three different kinds of kits and spent 200 bucks worth of models just to build one vehicle or monster? Well, you've already bought the models and spent the money. Maybe this is a way to work through the kits faster while still creating something unique that you can play with and that you'd be happy with. Number two, make a mental shift. Don't look at it as a pile of shame or a file of shame or a failure or something to be embarrassed about. Instead, view it as an opportunity. One viewer said they refer to their STL files as a library, and that really resonated with me. Some of you are old enough to remember DVDs. And if you remember those, you'd watch the movie in the theaters, and then when it came out on DVD, you'd buy it, and you'd stick it on your shelf, and maybe you'd never watch it again. Maybe you'd watch it once a year, maybe you'd watch it every week. But the point is, you didn't buy it with the understanding that you had to watch it every single week to get your full use out of it. Instead, you added it to your collection, and you knew that whenever you wanted to watch it, it was there. So if you treat your pile of shame or files of shame that way, you look at it as you're building up a library, and when you're ready to paint or print that particular model, it's there for you. Now, one viewer, viewer pointed out that for him, it's actually about collecting. He mentioned that he has several files that he has no intention whatsoever to print, but he wants them as part of a collection. In which case, there's no file or pile of shame at all. You're simply adding to your collection. Number three, plan projects ahead of time and buy with a purpose. I know personally that when I try to put a hard stop on buying until I've finished all my projects, it makes the impulse buying even worse because telling myself no makes me resent, well, myself. Instead of trying to dam the river, try to redirect it. You allow yourself to spend and to buy into the hobby, but for this specific project right now, rather than for every potential project that you happen to see in the store. Now the viewer commented that this approach does take some self-discipline, but they also mentioned that they keep a Pinterest board of project ideas and that the finding and organizing of those projects and model ideas and paint schemes and all of that helps to scratch the itch of working on something right now and keep them from impulse buying. Number four, one viewer said, it doesn't effing matter because it's my time and my money. And you, sir, are absolutely correct. If you want to spend the money and buy six feet of models and kits and then light it on fire, that is entirely your prerogative. And some people have actually done that. I do have to say though, after I read that comment, my first initial reaction was, wow, this guy's pile of shame must truly be massive. Maybe even one of the pictures I had in that first video was yours. Who knows? Number five, schedule a game a few weeks or months ahead of time that's going to use some of the models in your pile of shame. I find that I have more desire to paint an army and to move forward in a project when I know it's going to get some use. I have something to look forward to, and I enjoy the building and painting more when there's a purpose and when there's a reason and when I know that in a few weeks these things are going to see tabletop time. Number six, set a dedicated time or day to hobby. If you try and do it whenever you quote, have the time, 
you're never going to have the time because something else will always come first. It's kind of like that proverb that if you want to save money, you have to pay yourself first, not with what's left over at the end of the month. Now, this may mean sacrificing a different hobby or sacrificing time you put into something else. You have to decide what's more important. I recall seeing a video years ago of this guy who posted about getting up every day an hour early before his wife, before his kids, before anyone else. So he had one hour of dedicated painting time. And the video showed this massive table of everything that he had painted. Now he admitted it wasn't great. He wasn't going to win any awards. He wasn't going to win any competitions, but he always had painted models on the table. Now, it's entirely possible that he was completely full of it, was just showing a collection that he had bought pre-painted or something that he had worked on before. I mean, that, that's, that's completely possible. But I think about this. There are folks who get up early to go to the gym. So what's the difference between getting up to work through your pile of shame? It's simply about priorities. Number seven, lower your standards. Now hear me out here. I'm not saying to purposefully paint your models to look like garbage. But be realistic about how much time you have, how much time you want to spend painting, and whether or not every single model in your army needs to be your very best work. Think about an army for like a rank and flank game. Does every model in a block of 20 guys need to be top notch? Or could you paint the front rank to be your very best and everything else to be a level or two below that? For those of you who've watched Tabletop Minions, Uncle Adam once had a video about this very thing. He talked about diminishing returns in painting, and I think he was absolutely right. There comes a point at which spending an extra hour or two on a single mini may do some super fine detail, but it, it just might not be worth it. Now, if that's what you want, then have at it. It's your model. But you gotta ask yourself, will anyone actually notice that you have six layers of paint for this liquid in a tiny vial on your model's belt? Maybe you'll put that kind of detail and time into characters or sergeants or models that you're only going to have one or two of in the whole army. But do you really need the rank and flank to have that level of painting standard? Typically, a basic tabletop standard with basing will look just as good from three feet away as the super detailed model. And the time you've saved, you can spend on something else. This is actually part of the reason I did that one video on the three stages of painting. I was curious to see what exactly a basic tabletop standard looked like, then a little bit of highlighting, and then a little more highlighting after that, to see how much time it took, and to show both myself and you, the viewers, that sometimes a basic tabletop standard isn't that bad. Number eight, consider paying someone to paint your stuff for you. I mean, look at the pile of shame. Let's say you have 500 bucks worth of stuff. Would you be willing to have half that much stuff if it were fully painted? Would you be willing to get rid of half to have the other half painted based in, in your cabinet? And then you would have no pile of shame whatsoever. I mean, you're going to be spending money on the hobby. You're just spending it in a different area. So if you were willing to spend $500 on just models, why not spend $300 on models and $200 to have someone paint it for you? And you don't have to go pro to someone who has a professional studio and charges really, really high prices because they paint like Golden Demon or Crystal Brush level painting. You don't have to do that. You can probably find someone at your friendly local gaming store who will do a basic tabletop standard for a reasonable price, five, six, seven dollars a model. They can build it, they can paint it, they can base it. It's just whatever you're willing to pay for them to do. Maybe even meet them halfway. Maybe you have them build and paint a basic tabletop standard and then you just do the details. Or vice versa, you build and put in the basic details and block in the colors and then they do the highlighting and they'll charge you less because they're not doing as much. Either way, if you're willing to spend tons of money just on a stack of boxes you're never going to open, why not spend a little less to have them all painted? Number nine, the clean break. Swallow that bitter pill and sell some, most, or all of your models. That is the, the unpainted, unopened. I'm not saying, you know, cut the hobby entirely here. I imagine that would take a lot of effort. 
you'd have to take a good look at every single item in the pile of shame and ask, was this an impulse? Was this part of a project? Was this a deal that was just too good to pass up? Do I have buyer's remorse over this? Do I feel bad that I bought it or do I feel bad that I just haven't got to it yet? Sometimes selling off the stuff that's been around for a long, long time might actually lighten your load both physically and mentally and it would put a little cash back in your pocket. There was another suggestion from someone who said, hold on to it until it becomes out of print. And then you can probably sell it for more than you bought it. Now, that might not do anything to help the size of the pile of shame immediately, but there will be a mental shift in your mind. I'm no longer holding on to this, pretending I'm gonna paint it someday when really I know I'm probably not. Instead, it's I'm holding on to this until I can sell it to make some money. And you put it in a far corner of the closet, make a little note or post it somewhere, remind you that it's there, and move on with the rest of your pile. There was also one interesting comment from a viewer who said the clean break was so hard to do because for them, each of their minis was like a little horcrux, for those of you familiar with the Harry Potter terminology. That is, there's a little piece of this person's soul in every single one of their minis, and they just can't bring themselves to sell anything. I completely understand that one. And I think that's why the clean break can be one of the most difficult ways to clear out the pile, even though it's usually the most effective. Number 10, it's not really a solution, but it was an interesting debate that I saw between a couple viewers and I thought, well, why not put it out in front of everybody in case you didn't read the comments. These two viewers were debating which was worse, the pile or the file. Now, I'm not going to get into the debate. I'm not waiting in. I'm not picking a side. What I did think was interesting was some of the arguments that they made. So for one side, they argued that the pile of shame was better because you can always sell it and get some of your money back. Whereas the file of shame, good luck selling that to someone secondhand. On the other side, the argument for the file of shame said it takes up no space, physical space at least, and it is a fraction of the cost. So therefore, you have to spend a heck of a lot more on STLs before you equal the cost of a, uh, you know, a physical pile of shame. And even then, it's just space on a hard drive. So what do you guys think? The file or the pile? Which one would you rather be stuck with? So there they are. Top 10 reasons or ways to get through your pile of shame. Your fellow gamers have come through with these tips and suggestions about what to do to maybe help you work through it. Hopefully, one of these suggestions will be exactly what you needed. And even if it only helps you reduce your pile by one single model, I'd say that that's good enough.